So there's, there's a couple different components to how we track on a stage. There's a small intersense camera here, which looks up. And this camera has about a 90 degree field of view. And as it looks overhead, we have these circular barcodes on the ceiling. Each one of them is unique. And so the camera looks up and can recognize each one of those barcodes and figure out exactly where we are in a, under a stage. So this is a great little sensor, it, uh, and it generates really good position data. The rotary data is a little wobbly. Uh, so in the grand tradition of robot robotics, we built our own sensor called an air track. And this is a set of uh, very, very, very accurate gyros. And this is uh, basically a kind of sensor that You'd really, um, you'd find it on, you know, say, missiles and <laughs> sorts of things like that. But we've uh, we built one that, that basically tracks cameras. So between the two of these, we the between the intersense and the air track, we can derive exactly where we are on a stage and which direction we're pointed. In addition to that, we're also measuring the position of the lens, and with especially with the zoom lens. The zoom lens characteristics will change remarkably and dramatically, even with very very small increments. So you have to measure the lens very, very, very precisely to get it to match up. So between all these three components, the InterSense air track and the lens control, we can actually derive exactly what the camera is doing. And since we have video coming in, we know the time code. And we can match on each individual frame exactly what that camera was doing, where it was going, what it was pointing at, the focus distance, the zoom, distortion, everything. Nice. Um, how much pre-production time does someone need uh, if they're if they're going to call you up? Do you have to come, especially where you're attaching things with the lenses and you've got the, the tracking system? How much time do you need to set up? So one of these a typical stage like this, a fairly large sound stage, the markers are, are simply printed on a paper, uh, on heavy paper, and we put them on gator board, uh, and then those that can be attached onto a standard stage quite rapidly. That went up in a day. Uh, and then we go in with a, a architectural survey tool and we'll measure exactly where each one, each one of those components is. And that takes about a couple of hours. When you, when you come on set, everything's just in a, a little case. So there's that, those uh, two boxes over there. So this is generation one of the Prevision system. Huh. Um, and I was very proud of for fitting it into a 200 pound rack, uh, rack case. And one of these systems uh, got dropped off a loading dock uh, and uh, it turns out that even in a uh, military-hardened uh, transport case, you drop it off a loading dock, you can still break it. So we came back from that trip, and that started the R&D project for the portable. And we essentially have all the same computational power in here that's in here, and it fits into carry-on. And that has made an enormous, enormous difference in the ease of setup and how quickly we can go out to a given production. You just get on the airplane, the sensors fit into a small case, and then you can essentially go and handle a production of nearly any size. And so in visual effects, you have several different stages. There's the keying, the tracking, the rendering, compositing, etc. The tracking is, is the area where you figure out where you are in the scene. And so we read data from those sensors, pull it into the software systems here, and it lets us uh, adjust around very easily where we want to be. If we want to move up or down in the scene, it's very easy for us to move the virtual scene camera around much easier than it would be to, you know, typically we can move the world faster than we can move the cameras, uh -huh. which is one of the magic aspects of virtual productions. It is a fully 3D scene derived from photographs. And we developed a pipeline to be able to go out and photograph a number of images in a row. We feed it through a couple of different automated tools that figure out where those cameras were. And then we wrote real-time projection shaders that are actually projecting those photographs onto very simple geometry. And that's, that lets us really solve one of the big problems um, in virtual sets, which is getting a photorealistic look in the background. And we can solve it very quickly. This took about a day to make. As I zoom in on the camera, the background image also matches along. So that is a completely CG background, but it's following the zoom very precisely. So this really shows, in many ways, what the real potential of virtual production can be. It looks like we're on a large uh, skyscraper in Los Angeles, a helipad in downtown. But as we come over, we realize that, in fact, uh, we're actually in our office on a small green screen stage. We found that a large number of productions are starting to incorporate more 
CG characters into it, and that has all the same difficulties in green screen as you have with backgrounds. People need to see where the character is going to be before they can properly react with it. Yeah. So this, in many ways, now you can actually see where the different components would be. If you have a robot running by me, <laughs> I know I need to stand here to, to stay out of the robot's way. When you see it all together, it's so obvious where everything needs to be. And if you can't see it all together, then it's so hard to guess and guess correctly. And you only find out when it's too late. And it just, there, there's a great quote where filmmaking is a medium of happy accidents. And we like to keep the, the accidents happy. <laughs> the unhappy accidents cost a lot of money. <laughs>